from the makers of Cold Water Omo, Punch was holding forth yet again on his small stage of the Punch and Judy Theatre at the old artist's home of Grease Paint Grange. This time to a selective audience. Mr. Punch, why all this hold up? We were set to play the game once again. We were all set to kill Wiltshire. Wiltshire will have to wait. This concerns part of your makeup. It was carelessly left at the scene of the crime. Ah, that was only a facial extremity, a scarlet proboscis, a... A nose by any other name. Hmm? The point is that it was a vital clue to your identity. You have both been wearing stage makeup. Well, I work best in costume. Isn't that so, Jolly? The Max is right. I feel naked without makeup. Yeah, we work the whole act like this all the time. Quiet. Your makeup is distinctive to you, Mary Maxie. Of course it is. If I found out anybody else was stealing my act and my makeup, do you know what I. Oh, the registration office. Miss Marcia Rugman. She knows me. She, she's got my face on file. Exactly. She is the reason why I called this emergency meeting. She must be disposed of. What do you say to that? Yes, yes, yes. Hella! Hella! The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Coldwater Omo has really powerful cleaning action. Mrs. Senior discovered this. My husband wears overalls to work, and they come back very sort of greasy and dirty. My girl actually does them by hand in the tub, but she uses cold water, Oma, and they're fine, and they come up perfectly clean. They say once an Oma user, always an Oma user? I've stuck to cold water, Oma, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. Cold water Omo cleans best. Beautiful Jill St. John knows the value of the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Choose Lux to keep your skin soft and smooth. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 3 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel hit even more trouble and meet a comedian's gag writer who says, inevitably... Stop me if you've heard this. Two members of the board of directors of the Capital Land and Development Company had been murdered. And John Steed and Emma Peel were, frankly, baffled. The only real clue they had was a theatrical one, a red nose in the shape of a ping-pong ball. The sort of nose a clown would wear. Not much to go on. Except that every clown has to have his makeup registered. Mrs. Peel had gone to the registration offices and interviewed a nervous little lady named Marcia Rugman. Miss Rugman had promised to identify the red nose from the hundreds she had registered. Mrs. Peel was content to wait. John Steed was resigned to waiting. But Mary Maxie Martin, who owned the nose, wouldn't wait a moment longer. Come on, we've got to get there fast, Jolly. Don't call us. We'll call you. Here we go. No, not that fast. We don't want to end up dead like the rest of them. No, not that slow. We'll never get there at this pace. You know something, Maxie? What? I think you better drive. I don't wish to know that. Can't you leave the stage? Look, the old act's been like a hearse all week. It's either Miss Ruckman's hearse or it's a double bill affair. Yours and mine. Carry on, but for heaven's sake, find the place. I think it's down a bit and then second on the prompt side. But then get there, will you? This is the most important date we've ever had, Jolly. Get there! <laughs> Miss Marcia Rugman had worked quietly but thoroughly for hours, going through all the clown's makeups illustrated upon her countless rows of eggs. She sighed impatiently. Oh, eggs so much time, time. There are so many faces and so few clues. 
think I might just put my finger on him at any moment. And then again, of course, it could take days. Ah! Miss Rugman stretched out a nervous hand. This could be it. Yes. I think so. Now, all I have to do is to ring Mrs. Peel and report the whole matter. Ah, peace at last. As Miss Rugman made her way towards the small outer office which contained the telephone, a fanlight in the storeroom opened. Careful now, Jolly. Any noise is going to spoil our whole entrance. Right. Great, here I come. Good. Where is the old bag? Must be through in the other office. Okay, Jolly, let's try the old banana routine. Suits me. Miss Rudman was on the phone to Emma Peel. Hello? Hello, uh, Mrs. Peel? Yes, yes, Marcia Rudman of Variety Registration. Oh, yes. Have you any news for me? Yes, yes, I think so. The red nose seems to be identical to that used by a variety comedian known as... Oh, Oh dear, something's happening. Hold on. Here we go, Jolly. A one, a two, a three. I say, I say, I say, would you care to hear what the girl said to the sailor? Yeah, that is ridiculous. Perfectly correct, I think, you Now, what is this? What's going on? What do you think you're... Ah! There was a large banana skin in the way. Miss Rugman, in her concern, didn't see it until too late. She ended up under a bench... Maxie produced his toy pistol, and he and Jolly went into their exit routine. Oh, we're very, very, very sad that you've had to leave us, but when you've got to go, you've got to go. It was Miss Rugman. She sounded as though she had something to tell me. Then she was called away, and well, there was some crazy type singing going on. I think the old girl's in trouble. You better come with me, Steve. By the time Steed and Emma Peel had broken into the registration offices, Maxie and Jolly had, of course, left. Miss Rugman didn't look a pretty sight lying on the floor amongst the broken eggs and the filing cabinets. All the king's horses. And all the king's men. Poor thing, nasty mess. What the devil was she about to tell you? We shall never know. I sincerely hope we shall. Now, let's see, she was on the telephone. That's through here. Yes, the phone's still off the hook. Ah, what's this on the writing pad? Hey, let me see. A red-nosed comedian, the registration of Mary, Mary Maxie Martin. Martin. We could be getting somewhere at last. Congratulations. Congratulations to Maxie and Jolly. <laughs> Superbly executed, if you will forgive the pun. <laughs> the egg woman can't give us away now, eh, Jolly? <laughs> That's no yoke, eh? Uh, they don't call Maxie the man with a million cracks for nothing. <laughs> what next, Mr. Punch? Or rather, who is next? Back to the directors, of course. Wiltshire. We had a new routine all worked out for him, didn't we, Jolly? Sure, sure. This one will go like a bomb, Mr. Punch. Like a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wiltshire it is, then. But first... Yes? yes? First, I think you must think carefully. Is there anyone else who could give you away? Anyone who knows your act well? No, everyone we know is dead. Yeah, or soon will be. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then you'd better get off to rehearse. We don't want anything to go wrong. It won't. Well, we promise you. Split second timing. That's been the secret of our success. Come on, Jolly. Let's give them the old tab exit. La -dum -ba -dum -bum -bum. Oh, oh, we're very, very sad that we have to leave you. But when you got to go, you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Meeting dismissed. That concludes our session. Here, there's just one thing, Mr. Punch. Oh, yes, yes. Who is it? Ah, oh, Letty LaRue, the lass from Lancashire. What is it, Letty? You asked if there was anyone who knew Maxie's act. Well, what about the gag writer? Gag writer? Aye. I worked all the halls up north with Maxie and Jolly. They always had the same gag writer. You think he might give something away? Max and Jolly haven't really worked for years, but they could be traced through the gag writer. Why, why, anyone know the name of this? Gag writer? Marla. Bradley Marla. That's his name. 
Bradley Marler. So this Mary Maxie Martin hasn't really been in work for ages, Steve. Uh, resting, Mrs. Peel. And what are we doing in this sleazy place? Bradley Marler. Who's he? A writer. The only person I can find who might lead us to Mary Maxie. He used to write his material for him. Gag writer? I've never met one of those before. Well, it's always nice to have a new experience. Ah, here we are. Come in. Bradley Marler was an experience. Wearing dirty slacks and an enormous sweater, he was sitting behind a rickety desk peering at a typewriter. Papers fell from the desk, spilling over the floor. He looked up and ran his fingers through long, unkempt hair. Uh, Bradley Marler, if I'm not, I'm having a great time with his wife. <laughs> great time with his wife. Not bad, eh? <laughs> Chop that down. Uh, beg your pardon? It's a joke. Great time with his wife, and I'm not even married. <clears throat> well, uh, perhaps not. Yes, well, I'm John Steed, and this is Emma Peel. Steed and Peel. No, never heard of you. Song and dance? Acrobat? Now listen to this. Girl was going to marry a millionaire. Friend of hers said, do you know what you're doing? He's 78. The girl says, look, if someone gives you a blank check, you don't look at the date. <laughs> like it? Devastating. Um, not so, Mrs. Peel? It has a certain humorous shape. Uh, don't go away. I've got more, yeah? Uh, we were hoping that you could help us. Uh, I'm a writer. Uh, not an agent. Uh, can't get anyone work. Uh, we're not in the entertainment business. Oh, in television. Uh, I've got a hilarious brain surgeon routine. Uh, not television. Oh, uh, a doe rabbit came out of the prairie bush and said, I wouldn't do that again for 50 bucks. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we don't want to start any shows running. Um, I understand you used to write gags for Mary Maxie Martin. Who hasn't worked for some time. Hardly surprising. Uh, Maxie Martin. <laughs> Dear old Maxie Martin. Whatever happened to him? Yes, well, we thought you might be able to tell us. I haven't seen him for years. A great comedian, a quick change artist. You don't know where he might be at the moment? No. Where do they all go? Vaudeville, Verabi, it's dead. Theatres, music halls, closed. Maxie Martin and Jolly Jenkins. Old style, that act. Uh, couldn't adapt a new routine. Yes, well, tell me more about Maxie. Well, what is there to tell? He ruled the Gladchester Palladium. Played there for years. I loved him. The Gladchester Palladium, that rings a bell. Yeah, it's closed now, of course. Been stamped in empty for I don't know how long. Fall into pieces, I shouldn't wonder. Like all the other old theatres. Yes, well, times change. Sad. Sad when you think you'll never see Max's big feet again and that red nose. Yeah. Ferrati's dead. Is it? I wonder. Dead, but Tom um, won't lie down. Or it might just be deciding to fight back. By trailing around the old haunts like the Gladchester Palladium. Let's go, Mrs. Peel. Bye, Mr. Marler. Thanks a lot. <laughs> And with a final heave on the spanner, Ronnie Miller finishes changing his flat tire in just 6 minutes, 32 seconds. Well done, Ronnie. You play any other sports? I wash the car once in a while. You look very fresh, Ronnie. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. There's no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. If you use cold water Omo, it comes out very, very easily indeed. Says Mrs. Sutherland of the Inneken. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. It cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omen. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden. <laughs>